each other It doesn't make any sense I know that these streets are crazy But you got a life to live If not for you, it's your family Or maybe all of your friends Come give your life to Jesus So turn away from all your sins But you say you're too deep in this madness And there's no way of escape The dirt is too grimy upon you So thick like the icing on cake Or how could a God even love you You feel like you'll never be clean But you'll clean all that dirt up off you So the real you can finally be seen Give your life to Jesus Gotta be on heart, heart. no need for opposition. opposition Leave another family scarred, scarred. so many other options. other options To help a neighborhood that's rough, rough. Make a peace pack to end this And show that enough, enough is enough. enough But you say you're too deep in this madness And there's no way of escape The dirt is too grimy upon you So thick like the icing on cake Or how could a God even love you You feel like you'll never be clean But you'll clean all that dirt up off you so the real you can finally be seen Give your life to Jesus Will you give your life to Him? Give your life to the Lord What's good, y'all? This is Grape Tree Podcast. Of course, new Grape Tree Podcast. Besides, something is uh, going on with your mic, man. Uh, you got to unmute your mic, brother. There you go. Yeah. Yes. Welcome, listeners, man. Hey, we want to welcome everybody. This is Tuesday, so you know it's going down. The new Grape Tree Podcast. Myself, tonight's special guest. I'm going to let him ramble in a minute, man, but I do want to... Uh, uh give some shots out man that song you just heard of course that was uh what, what we call him now yfg your favorite guy uncle boudreau if you've been listening to me for whatever man y'all know boudreau is my producer uh john say this fire that's boudreau man y'all hear me say him on every album uncle boudreau 
Y'all got a chance to see that he's not a fictitious character, but that is Bujo. Shouts out Bujo for sending me that video. I was supposed to add that uh, side about two weeks ago, but he gave it to me at the last minute. I'm like, come on, Bujo. But that's anybody know Bujo? That's probably his character. Welcome to the Grape Tree Podcast, y'all. My man in the house. Let me quit rambling about Bujo. I got my dude in the house, man. Some of y'all know him as Brother War. I know him as Sia. Some of y'all know him as the third member of Brothers Grimm, the legendary uh, Grape Tree group that consisted of himself and two other members uh, throughout the years. I don't, I haven't kept up with my, many of them. Uh, nobody from the Brothers Grimm side besides yourself. Uh, Sai is an ATL man. He does it big. Uh, some of us, we get called old school, old dudes, but Sai like, nah, man, I know we OGs, but I like getting it in with the young people, bro. I love that about him, man. He don't flinch up or he don't make an enemy of the, of the, of the new school, man. He actually goes out and engage him. Uh, if you're on TikTok, you probably seen, uh, brother war everywhere. His TikTok popping. My, my TikTok got, uh, crickets on it, so I ain't, I don't do jack over there. If I might put a half a video or something. I don't know, man, but side TikTok is popping, man. Y'all write in any questions. I do want to give him a chance to open his mouth and tell y'all who he is, and then I'm going to get out some stuff I want to ask him from all the years, but this is none other than Brother Y, uh, Brother uh, War, I'm sorry, third member of uh, Brothers Grimm, man. What's going on, dude? Salute, my brother. Salute. Yeah, man, I'm, bro. I'm a man on a mission, bro. So basically what it is, is my mission has not changed. We just in a different era so we can use different tactics. You know what I'm saying? Already. The mission remains the same from all the way back when, when I was in Brothers Grimm, man. Uh, the most high, the spirit has had me continue on that mission. It's been bumps and bruises and scrapes and discipline. You know I know, brother. You know I know. You know what I'm saying? But we got to <laughs> stay the course with, with whatever God has called us to do. You know what I'm saying? We all are called as believers. We're all called. Are, we are all called to make a difference and reach people for the most high for Christ. And uh, so we all have different talents and abilities and gifts, man. And so I got to use my gifts the best way that I know how the best way that he's given me to make that impact, to make a difference, to reach people to reach the lost, the hurting, the suffering, you know what I'm saying? The marginalized, those people that have been cast aside, those people that are hurt by the church, those people who don't believe because they've been disenfranchised. They think it's a fairy tale. They don't think it's real, but it is real because God's power has been real in my life. throughout. You know what I'm saying? From the days of brother. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Hey, let me ask you a question for those who do not know. Yeah. And they may not be familiar with brothers Grimm, man. Tell me the conception. Now, I'll give y'all my story. Uh, Brothers Grimm was a group that Nolly picked up from the West Coast at the time. Uh, as I told you early, size in Atlanta, but actually Brother Grimm was from the West Coast. And my wife used to love the Brothers Grimm CD. Y'all had like a lot of pain and hurt. It's the struggle of the bubble to keep everything all right. My wife used to love, love Brothers Grimm, bro. And uh, I know what was it, the second album, or did Crow break off? And Crow had a unique ministry, man. Uh, you know, his his solo project was like, it was real hardcore about pimping and and, and the whole pimping whole game. And y'all got to know this, man. This is, we, we talking 2020 now, uh, 2022. Now, we talking way back in the 90s, bro, so to bring that type of message to the body of Christ, bro, it was very, very controversial, man, but I loved it because it was very, very real at the same time, man. So, man, tell me how you met Crow and and um, how y'all formed the Brothers Grimm, man. I need to know the story on that. I never heard that story myself, son. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to tell you my side of the story, of course, right? Because it's me <laughs> You're right. the only one I heard, so this this is gonna yeah. be law up until I hear different. Oh no, and I I'm I'm gonna spit all facts, but you know it's three perspectives and three intersecting individuals. You know what I'm saying? So basically, what had happened was I was what you would call a backslider, right? I was very I had a lot 
of depression issues, a lot of issues, man, emotional issues. But I had a good intention. I always want to be a good person. You know what I'm saying? And I grew up uh, in between middle class and hood. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, you know, just like a lot of teenagers, you know what I'm saying? Like you kind of get drawn towards the whatever counter culture you identify, whether you punk rock, whether you gangster. But we was in the 90s. So that gangster thing, you know what I mean? And we was on the West Coast. So that was real heavy. You know what I'm saying? So like um, but I was quiet, man. And uh, I found my voice through rapping, man. Like so. I started rapping and other people was like, yo, you quiet, bro. But like, I was that quiet dude that hung out with gangbangers and stuff, but I wasn't in a gang. Like I really wanted to live for God, yeah. but I, I Christians were corny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I was kind of trying to find my way and I was kind of drifting out into the world, but I, I would be in it, but I couldn't get all the way in. You know what I'm saying? I was around drug dealers, gangbangers, pimps, all of that. And I was cool with them. But I couldn't go that extra mile. You know, I might drink right. us. I might do all this other stuff. But when it comes to actually abusing women, selling poison to the people, I was more of a, a conscious revolutionary type of person, too. So anyways, it's a lot. It's a lot to the story, man. But um, <laughs> for my journey, it started one day for my part, for like the beginning of Brothers Grimm for me was that i was talk kind of like i would always kind of talk to god like i prayed all the time even though i was out there you know what i'm saying uh, i still knew i wanted to live for god i was just so hurt you know what i'm saying just so like struggling bro but i would talk to god and he would talk to me man and so i was just kind of having a conversation in my head and i was like man somebody got to tell people the truth like Cause you know, gangster rap, bro. People listen to gangster rap and they'd be ready to shoot somebody. You know what yeah. I mean? They, I, it, like, it was gangster rap was incomplete because yeah. they told uh, the stories, the hood stories, but they didn't give you hope or way out, man, or a solution, right? Or a solution, and, right? Gangster rappers that I did like had a little bit of revolutionary, like you know, Ice Cube and Tupac. They would kind of speak on it, and then your boy uh, Scarface, man, he he would talk about his struggle and you know talk about god you know i often drift when i drive you yeah. know shout you out know. to the goat scarface definitely uh still one of my favorite artists man me too man so i was into scarface so i was into those type of artists where they would were honest about the dichotomy and the struggle they was in you know what i'm saying they were more honest about it uh where you know ice cube would with, with gangster rap but he started turning a little more revolutionary pro the people and stuff so right. it and all that man i was in my head and i was kind of having a moment with god and i was like somebody got to tell these people the truth you know what i'm saying through rapping somebody got to because i noticed whatever they rap about people want to be about so somebody got to tell them the truth in rap and i felt the holy spirit just said like um you can rap why don't you do it you know <laughs> Like, I'm telling you, I'm putting that on your mind for a reason. And I was like, well, look at me, man. I ain't no leader. I'm, you know, I'm pale. I'm around all brown. Bro. Uh, like, I'm not trying to be a leader, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to, like, hang out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And But it stuck with me, bro. And I just kept, people kept coming to me and being like, you know, people, I'd be like, why everybody tripping off what I said? Because other people be saying crazy stuff and nobody cares. And then yeah. God, like, because you're a voice because people are going to listen to you because I know you're you're supposed to lead them to me. That's why I keep putting the spotlight on you. And I didn't want to be like that. I was kind of an introvert. I just want to be cool. I just want to chill. I want to be like in the background, just hanging out. But God Pur kept Purpose putting... overcame you though, man. Purpose exactly. overcame you. And it's funny, this is your side of the story because like I say, man, you know, and it's a it's a few grape tree artists that I, I haven't had a chance to uh see or hear from. Mostly for the rest, you know, for the most part, I, I get a chance to talk to uh pretty much every grape tree artist. But what makes your story unique, man, is that you the one still in there. And so when you tell me that God told you I made you a voice, brother, the evidence is clear. Because here we are 25 years later, bro, and you still, you know, you was one of the first persons uh, still going strong. I used to watch you from the background before we chopped it up. And I'm like, dude, still going, you know. And uh, 
like I say now, TikTok on five sizes on top of it, man. You know, us old school, we trying to figure out how to swim in this water, man. Size then figured it out, swimming and, and 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 getting it going, man. So it's a question in here. It said, How did Brothers Grimm get signed to Grape Tree? Okay. It's coming from my man Zig Madison. What up, Zig? Oh, what's up, Zig? That's my brother. I know Zig. Zig, Zig Grape Tree Artist. New new Grape Tree <laughs> Artist. In fact, man. Zig making fun of my haircut. What up, Ziggy? I like it, man. I like the cut. I <laughs> yeah, I had the free forms going for a while, man. But uh, yeah. I got to do some PR, so I couldn't quite make it look good at this point. So I had to go ahead and shave it. But now, Zig hey, want to know, man. You look a uh, lot. You look younger with that haircut, though, man. You look, and that's another reason I, I'm not particularly crazy about it. I, I'm, I'm trying to look old on purpose. I, I want my age to follow me, man. The Bible says a hoary head is a sign of wisdom, man. So I try to put my grades up there if I let my hair grow. Back to yeah. Z's question, though. I'm all over Zig time right here, man. He say, how did y'all get signed to Grape Tree? Bro? All right. So uh, I'll skip over how, how Brothers were informed, and then I could come back to that if you want. How we got signed to Grape Tree? Well, well, I'll just go through the story real quick. We actually started out as a revolutionary, not a gospel group. All right. So we did not start out as a gospel group as Brothers Grimm. So we start out revolutionary, but gangster. And then we came to the point in the crossroads where God was convicting me. And he was like, you got to give it all the way over. Because even when we was revolutionary, but gangster, I would talk about God and Jesus, even in the revolutionary music, just like a lot of uh, Muslims do. Like they'll talk about their faith in the revolutionary music. So I was kind of like that, but I wasn't all the way over. And then God was like, you got to come all the way over. And I was like, but God, like Brothers Grimm was my gang. Like it was a gang of three people. Like they they were former gang related people. I never was actually in a gang, but it was like our gang, you know? And yeah. so and so it was my identity. And so God was like, nah, you come over and they'll come with you. And I'm like, nah, they're not gonna come over. You know what I'm saying? Like Crow, uh Crow, who was like, you know, very the strong, real strong uh person. Uh, strong willed individual. He was very anti Christianity and everything. So we would have disagreements about it. But anyway, I just started standing up for for Christ. You so know? so you telling me that that you pretty much was the catalyst that led Brothers Graham over to spiritual or God or gospel. Let's just Absolutely. put it plain, gospel rap, bro. Absolutely. So brother, I would have never guessed it. I would have never guessed that. I thought because because any of y'all know who listened to Brothers Grimm, y'all know what I'm saying. Crow Crow was that guy. Crow was the upfront man. So, right. you know, looking from the outside, you would have thought Crow was the guy that that kind of like you know, but but he was actually the one that was struggling with 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 the faith a little bit. Well, man, no, he, he wasn't initially even down. He was like, bro, why are we? why y'all why are you so into this jesus thing who oppressed our people and da da da, da and you know, <laughs> I, i'm part i'm part indigenous native american so he's like man why are you into that like he oppressed your people and da, da. and i was like no nah, man that's not what it's about and so we would have a lot of those discussions and dialogues and i still talk about that stuff because like i'm still a revolutionary you know what i'm saying yeah. like yeah I'm, so, but anyway, I'm not trying to belabor the point. It's just I gotta kind of set it up because nah, go for it, brother. This is your that, hour. You get to speak whatever you want to, man. That was part of the transition right there. You know what I'm saying? So we literally had some supernatural experiences together. That's a whole nother thing. Like, um, that's why I'm so into God. Like, I've had supernatural experiences, bro. So, like, I know God is real. So hallelujah. And hallelujah. I, and I know I ain't here, bro. I know demons are real. I've ex we me and me and Crow experienced a demonic situation together. We saw it and everything. So that and that was before. So it was like coming to a like a confrontation. Like y'all got to choose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they uh, so then once Crow because he was kind of the leader personality, the type A personality. I'm still cool with playing the background. I always never wanted to be the leader. But God showed me, like, I need to step it up. Like, and he keeps telling me, you need to step it up. So I keep stepping it up. Like, I'm not one of them people who really needs to be in the limelight. I yeah. just share my art. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. You know what, though? You know what God told me? And I don't mean to interrupt your story. No God told me this, man. Leaders go first. You can't be a leader if you don't go first, man. Right. 
you know some and, and sometimes people get management or upper level management confused with leadership right i might i might hire you uh size to be to manage uh my company but it's because you're a good manager you may not necessarily be a good people person which in turn makes you a bad leader Right. But because you're in a position of upper management, people naturally think you're a leader and you're not. You're a good manager, but he's not the guy that should be leading or engaging people. So that's a misconception guy was sharing with me uh, like a few weeks ago. He was like, everybody who's in a higher position don't mean they're good leaders. Some are selected for higher positions because they're good stewards, not necessarily good leaders. Right. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, you're going to get me spinned off into something else, but I'm going to just go ahead. Uh, man, bro, this is this is how we go, though, man. This is how, to, you know, this is New Grape Cheap Podcast. Just in case you're tuning in, this is my guy, Size, man. Third part, Brothers Grim, Brother War. I call him Size. If y'all just met him today, you call him Brother War. Like he said, he's a, a revolutionary, uh, a legendary gospel hip-hop artist, legendary grape tree artist, man. So, man, he just spitting how Brothers Grimm formed and how they got signed to Grape Tree. So, go for it, brother. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not trying to diverge, and I'm going to get right back on topic, but you brought up a very important point, so I got to put a pin in it. Um, leader, it. Leadership, brother. You got to look at our leader. Our leader is Christ. He, the first shall be last, the last shall be first. This is why I ran from leadership, because truly leadership is service. Leadership right. is not about the leader. It's where the person sacrifices their own desire for the sake of the people. That is a true leader. From Martin Luther King to, of course, Jesus first, Martin Luther King, Malcolm, they died for the cause. And that's something that even Brothers Grimm understood. We were inspired by a revolutionary. Jesus, Yeshua, was always a revolutionary to me. That's always the way I looked at him. And so anyway, so that's what it is. If you want to be a leader, you got to realize you're actually last. You're actually putting others before yourself and your own desires. You're You're looking at things as the greater good. And so that's part of the reason I didn't want to be a leader. I didn't want that responsibility. But as Not my me. life progressed, people kept keep pointing me out, bro. Like they'll keep walking up to me. Like even before Brothers Grimm, they was like, you a leader. And I was like, don't put that on me. Like, I'm, I'm cool, man. Like, I'm just an artist. Like, I don't I just rap. You know, I, I want y'all to hear the message. But no, nah, like. So, well, man, Daniel said that's what hooked me to your music, man. That's what he's talking about, man. You know, that's humility is what he's talking about. If, if it sounds foreign to you, uh, most people run to leadership because for whatever reason, it comes with power. Besides saying God called him to be a leader and, it, you know, too much humility. Right. False humility. God saying, all right, size, you are you're a mighty warrior. You said, nah, God, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that. <laughs> I but he not. know who we are, man. And, and God is patient. Every, I, I like to say that I don't want to interrupt, but okay. God is patient, people. People think, man, I disobey God. Now here come lightning bolts. It's not like that, man. God knew, he knows you got to only this much faith. So he know when he come tell you, you're going to be a king, you're not going to believe it. I don't care if he is God. You, you ain't going to believe it at first. So he know he has to do little things to build your faith up till you start telling him, God, I'm a king. God, I'm a king. Now you're like, all right, you ready. It ain't so much about God say you're a king and you shrink back from it and now he punishes you because you're not doing what I said. That, I don't see that God. God is good to me, man. Amen. Yeah. So, yeah, man, you, bro, I got, I'm telling you, I got like so many. Go for it, brother. I don't mean to cut you out. I keep hearing bells as you talk at the same time. No, I'm cool. I like the back and forth. That's I like conversations where one person talk, then the other person talk, then the other. I like it. I feed yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, what I was gonna say is, um, so I'm gonna finish the story. But man, you every time you say something, I think of a new idea, a new story. Cause like yeah, revelation, bro, brother. <laughs> about I lived it, bro. Like yeah. I tell you, God has just always interrupted my life when I was kind of off track or whatever, but I always wanted him to, cause I knew I was struggling. But anyway, saying all that, man, um, how, how great tree got signed was I'm trying to, uh, so brothers Grimm 
finally went gospel. And I think I pretty sure Crow, AKA Lee even had a dream. Like if we don't go gospel, we never, cause we had just put out a, a, a tape. That's the, how long ago it was a uh, revolutionary tape. And it was kind of dope. It was a little EP or whatever. And we were starting to get a little buzz locally in our town. And then, um, but then he was like, man, until we do it for God, we never gonna, we never gonna make it. He just said, I, I know that like he knew that. And, uh, and so then we, wow. we did our first gospel tape. It wasn't even a CD, bro. It was a tape and I had drawn the cover like, cause I'm a visual artist. I drew it in the studio on a white piece of paper. We didn't even do it in color. It was black and white. And we somehow, I, I cannot remember. It was LG Wise was the plug. So somehow LG Wise, I don't remember. I don't know if he met, he might've met uh, Lee. I don't know if who he met through, like who met him first. I can't remember. It might've been Lee. Uh, but anyway, or it could have been me. I don't remember, man, but uh one of us so we knew lg wise and he was on he was telling us about grape tree and was like i don't know i don't know you know well let's check it out and bro lg wise page he texted me or something and um was like bro where can i get the uh where can i get your project i'm in town because he he used to live in uh, vancouver washington which is right across from portland oregon where we where we're from so yeah. basically suburbs of portland and he was like bro where can i and then he had moved he moved around a lot and he was and like lgy's lived everywhere brother yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> and so i think i don't know if he he was just all over the place man so then he was like he he texted or texted or called me it was like bro where can i get y'all i heard y'all put out a tape he was very supportive of us. He liked what we did. So he's like, bro, I need yeah, LG Wise absolutely loved Crow, bro. He he Lee. Yeah. Uh, uh for y'all knowing we call him Crow, Crow Lee. Y'all know. But he loved him, bro. I mean, he turned me on to y'all, man. Right. Uh, yeah. he was like, Man, this dude, Crow, man, this dude be spitting about pimping and all that, bro. He he sold him to me. So when I, I heard y'all brothers Grim, and my wife loved y'all CD, man. And we used to play it, and then Crow came out, and I was like, Cause, Cause, this thing was like, Nolly was like embarking on something new. Cause you know we were gospel rappers, so we we had the message of the gospel. And people ask me like this side, uh, they say, "Man, the new grape tree, uh, man, how did was what is somebody asked me? What's the qualification to get signed to new grape tree?" I say, "If you love God and you preach the gospel in your music, I consider you uh, for for the roster." And saying that to say this, Nolly was like, we all was like looking at gospel rap, like the whole thing is new. But here it is, he signed you guys, and then Crow come in with the pimping and all that. I'm like, ooh, bro. But I'm a new Christian at the time. So I didn't think none of that was, was out of bounds for Christianity. I later learned it is, and we don't talk about that stuff still in church, but that's how real Nolly was on the forefront, man. Right. Yeah, man, that's a whole nother topic. But anyway, <laughs> what was, so this is how it happened. He called me or texted me or whatever. And then I was like, yo, well, I told him what store. Cause we had, we had our tape in a store, a local store at the mall. He went to the mall and went and bought a tape and flew it down to Nolly. And wow. was like, check these guys out. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and so shout out to LG Wise because he's part of what made it happen. So then they sent us a, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it one thousand. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not gonna go into all the extra drama. It was a lot of drama because we were traumatized people, man. Like, but God was calling us, and we were answering that call. So it was a lot of stuff going on, bro. But anyway, uh, what happened was they sent us the contract. And, and I don't know nothing about no, I didn't, especially then I was like, bro, paper, just, I have ADD. I'm an artist. Paperwork, just looking at it scared me. <laughs> like just looking at paperwork made me nervous. Right. We call it the thick. When you yeah. look at record contract, we call it the thick. Bro, People I would be like, oh, man, man. What's, what's the record contract? I make, I try to make my contracts uh, size small and understandable as possible. Right. But I mean, a bro, real, right, like a that, major deal, that, brothers, like freaking 25 pages bro absolutely so basically we got the we got the contract 
Leah was like, man, this looks shady. Let's have a lawyer look at it. So they had a lawyer look at it and he was like, man, it's no good. So he sent Lee was more the business end. You know what I'm saying? So he yeah. he had that hustle. You know what I mean? A lot of ex drug dealers, pimps, whatever they they're businessmen, really, bro. They know how to handle business. So I was not the business end at all. And so yeah. he had them redraft <laughs> the contract, make it a little better. You know what I'm saying? A little better. And uh, yeah. then we signed. And then they were like, should we sign? And I said, bro, I'm going to be honest with you. I told Lee and Eric, the other members of Brothers Grimm, I said, I'm going to be 100 with you. I don't know if we'll ever make money off of this contract, but this is our opportunity to reach the world. And this is what we were called to do. So I don't think it's a good contract, but I think we should sign it anyway, because it will get us to the people. It will help us to reach many people. And so we just signed it. And then it, we did. We reached all kinds of people, people from all over the world. Still, I'm, be like, I'm in Houston, Texas, brother. And like I was saying, my wife is a fan, myself included. So. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. People say, oh, man, God, I mean, how you know God spoke to you? If you hear God speak something to you and then you see it come true, then you know it was God. You know? Amen. Well, now I got I to gotta switch that back around. Uh, I thought gospel rap was corny. You was one of the first artists that I actually liked that was gospel rap. I was like, all this other stuff, man, I'm sorry, no offense. I'm just really. <laughs> but then when I heard Little Rascal, I was like, oh, that's dope. And I, God I like bless, it. brother. God bless. Uh, it was no social sites back then. And I'm hearing, you know, I'm hearing uh, a few great tree artists saying that. And I'm like, wow, because I felt like we were all parallel. We were all moving like parallel. I had no idea that it was my, you know, me getting to Nali would actually create the catalyst that would bring some of y'all. I thought we was all just converging at the same time. You know. Oh yeah, no, you you uh was one of the people where I like, okay, you were an inspiration to me. I didn't try to emulate you because you have such a unique voice and sound, which is also what made you stand out. And Man. so but I just was vibing with you. I was like, this dude sound like he for real. He don't sound like he faking it. He like he for real and he's open and rapping unappetit unapologetically about God. And I always like the Texas sound, bro. Like I'm from the West coast. Now I live in the South. Yeah. So I still relate to Texas because, and my mom used to live in Texas for a while too. We we used to be considered the Midwest before yeah. the dirty, dirty had. And I said that in the song before, before the dirty had a name, we was considered the Midwest, man. So I always had a love for, for uh, the West coast, man. You know, I saw the Scarface, my favorite artist is like, uh, Ice Cube. And I said this to somebody the other day. I was like, one of my top five, very controversial top five is Dr. Dre. Right. People are like, oh man, he's a producer. He's not a rep. I'm like, Chronic is a five yeah. mic album. Yeah, and who's right. the artist on the cover? Right. And if you try to say because he's a producer, he's not a rapper, then you have to eliminate Kanye West too, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like Dr. Dre was a big inspiration for Crow. Here's, here's how I, I uh, I define top five size. If you take that person out of hip hop, your experience with hip hop right. stays the same or does it change? Right, yeah. And That's my the experience with gangster rap would not be the same if you took Dr. Dre, the artist, out. Right. Who held down NWA once Ice Cube left, man? You know. Right. Big facts. Ren uh -huh. was a great Scotty Pippen, but Dre had to be the Michael Jordan, bro. Yeah, I feel like Ren Ren got slept on. He was pretty dope, man. I always like. Well, when when he dropped his his, his solo project, though, it didn't do well. So right. Ren was like a Scotty Pippen. He he looks like a superstar on the side of a superstar. Right. Yeah. You 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 put him on the team to hold it up yourself. No, no disrespect to MC Ren, the OG. Shout out to you, man. I'm just saying, that's how it looks, bro. You might like drop a five mic joint next month, bro, and I be, <laughs> I'll be on here eating cheese, man. But uh, yeah, man. I ain't mean to cut you, but we we, we rolling, man. For those who just tuning in, this is uh, Brother War, third member of Brothers Grim, legendary Grape Tree artist group. Uh, this is the new Grape Tree podcast. I am Raz, your host. Uh, Brother War is active in atl man y'all check out any of his tiktok stuff man he got some stuff me and him getting ready to do some stuff 
I'm baiting with him. I'm I'm toying him. Maybe he can come back to Grape Tree, man, and 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 uh fulfill what God has already what he shared, what God told him that he'd be doing his leadership, man, and leading people to Christ, man. So yeah, I definitely hey bro, I'm gonna let you know I, I already want to be a part of it in some capacity. You know what Amen. I'm saying? So it's just fig just figuring out what's the best fit. And that's how I like to do everything, like you know, so like honestly, bro, I, I say this in front of you know, whoever. And you supposed to be front and center now because God told you that, man. You know, okay. I'm not I'm not sure where Mr. Lee is. And uh what was the third member guy, man? I hate to just, oh, just talk Eric. over. No, it's yeah. cool. Eric, okay. So what had happened was when we first started Brothers Grim, we start use our given names. We was like Brothers Grim, Eric, Lee, and Silas. So it was on the inside of the cover. But right. then we then we started going by nicknames because believe it or not my name is the most unusual but there was rappers already with silas in their name and you're not really supposed to um have the same name as any other artist that's kind of a rule you know what i mean you can have a right. song same title you can have an album with the same title but if it's a band or an individual artist you you can't you're not really supposed to have the same name so i right. had stopped right. I like to just using my name. So I had stopped using my given name and just, and I already had nicknames and stuff. So my nicknames have, or my artist name has, has changed over the years. It started out as a uh, war baby. And so war baby, <laughs> and that's a West coast thing. You know, we are, we used to have baby in our name, you know what I'm saying? Now they're, they're back to that. But back then we used to have baby in our name and war baby was like a child born in a time of war, a time of conflict. Right. Right. So hey, I got a comment right here. Say this stream should be blowing up. I remember give me one more day. That song helped me through some. It, it was it was one of my favorites as well, brother. It was yeah. one of my favorites as well, man. And that was Lee. I'm I'm sorry, that was Eric, aka Solemn. Right, so, right. That's why I wanted it. Shots out Eric, man. Uh if you if you out there on Facebook, Eric, I would love to sit you in with size, man. We probably come back together. I, I know Lee probably ain't trying to ain't trying to do this. I know he ain't got no problem talking to me, but he probably ain't trying to do this right here, man. But I love to have all three of you guys back, man, and uh, hear everybody's side of the story, man. Yeah. So uh, anyway, Solomon was definitely the melodic. He, so if y'all like the melodic side of Brothers Grimm, that's what he he could rap and kind of carry a tune. Like he kind of, um, you know, that was before melodic rap was really a thing. That's man. truth. That's truth, man. Everything nowadays, everybody trying to sing. But back then, you know, that was unique. Absolutely, man. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, man, so it, it's a lot of stories. It's a lot of a journey. And, and there's a reason why I still do music to this day, man. Um, I was getting fresh. Well, I'm an artist. So, like, you know, some people rap as like a hustle or like something to be seen i'm yeah. a art poet i'm a writer i'm a, a visual we, we see that looking behind you and i'm the same yeah. guys i was an artist before hip-hop right i used to draw pottery wheel uh all kinds of stuff so i tell people man artists is a, is a way of thinking bro it's a side uh it's a brain set now let me give y'all brothers Grimm story man the first time I had, a, you know, I didn't listen to Brothers Graham. And first time we met, we were all booked in Arizona. You remember that? Yep, that's the only time I met you in, in the flesh, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude booked us in Arizona. And, you know, I was, I had my guy managing me, man, uh, James Simmons. Uh, Shots out James Simmons. He was an idiot at the time, though. And I'll say that to you in your face. You know I will, James. He was an idiot at the time. Because he booked me on like a buddy pass bro and i don't know why i went along with it so i'm out here in arizona it's myself brothers grim in concert i don't know who else but this dude don't have all of our money right and he's i'm pretty much backstage like we finna get short changed man but the dude done something that i felt was smart even though it offended me he paid y'all instead of paying me. Oh, wow. Which was smart because it was three of y'all. It was more danger not paying y'all than it was paying me. But I had to hitch along with some guy that was uh, 
he was just influenced by my music, man. And he was like, Raz, man, this dude stuck you out, man. I feel the burden to get you home. So dude, like, I called up on the plane ticket because my ticket pushed me back another day. And he was like, nah, bro. He called up on some money, bro, and flew me out of the city, man. He probably put a couple hundreds in my a uh, couple hundred in my pocket, but I was like, that was the only time we ever seen each other on the road, and it was unpleasant circumstances, man, because I really wanted to hurt the show promoter. But when you're doing this junk for God, it's like, man, some people got touched, so I can't touch the guy, or I'm gonna erase the people that got touched. I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, it's being counterproductive, but. That was the only time we got a chance to get out on the stump, man, when the promoter, like, did y'all get paid? I know I'm pretty sure y'all didn't get paid all y'all money because he, he shorted me everything and, and gave whatever money he had to y'all, man. So He might have got us. He might have just got – I think he covered our airfare. And then I think that's all that happened. And so, like I said, Crow took care of the business in, but he did burn us. He didn't come through with what he said he was going to. You know what I'm saying? So that happened to a lot of times, bro. We was not getting paid very much, bro. Like it was not a lucrative thing. And, you know, Grape Tree didn't pay us. So like. Of course, man. Uh, yeah. Nolly was into the numbers game more so uh, to his to be the devil's advocate. Christian rap was not s selling, I, I guess, streaming today, but it wasn't as popular as it is today. So. Oh, yeah. But Nolly, but, Nolly uh, had an opportunity to make a lot of money because he had a bunch of artists, you know. If you got one item that sells 100 or you got 10 items that sell 10, to the person that's in possession of those items, you know, it's still the same thing. But to the people that only selling like 10, you see nothing, right? Right, right absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you know, for me, I was always missing oriented man so I, I would work full-time job and i would just you know moonlight as an artist Eat, like i would go places sign get on the plane sign an autograph jump back on go get ready for work you know <laughs> go sleep you know what i mean yeah. come back and do it again on monday and get back to work you know what i'm saying so it was like i wasn't getting paid bro i was always doing it and even after all these years man i get paid sporadically but it's never been about the money for me the irony bro the irony is that i'm an og now and i'm ready i, I battle i i've dealt with i'm be real i'm be real transparent i de i deal with chronic fatigue crohn's disease which is not fun um I, I deal with a low level of energy i'm not really this mellow it's just the, i'm battling you physically and <laughs> A lot of people have it worse. Wait, like p other people with Crohn's disease, they can't even function. So I'm grateful that I'm able to maintain, but it ain't easy, bro. Like, and I, I got a family, you know, blah, 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 da, 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 all the same stuff everybody else got. I, I wouldn't, I would have never guessed it, brother. I just, uh, I always seen you uh, normal. You look, you're normal to me. It always was part of right. your character, man. I uh, got a question from Zachary C. It say, are there any Brothers Grimm live performances on video, whether on YouTube or anywhere else? Uh, I don't believe so, man. I seen, I think I accidentally stumbled on some live performances from me uh, in the past. Uh, really, honestly, bro, like because of, it was crazy to be like kind of well known but in our actual life we weren't getting paid so there, <laughs> and i was more the one that was down to do a free show so yeah. i did a lot of free performances or minimal payment or like they just took care of my travel and lodging and they didn't pay me much else you know what i'm saying so we didn't have we didn't perform a lot as a group and i, I used to do a lot of like because you know brothers Grimm was we kind of always acknowledged that it was three solo artists. Right. In a, right. So I do my solo parts. You know what I mean? I would do right. snippets of songs or I would do. Um, <laughs> and and uh, I don't know. I'm just going to put out what I feel like is free game to people. Yeah. For artists today, nowadays, whether you're OG or not, bro, like 
people consume such short content. And so I don't do it. I, I have opportunities to perform for free here a lot. Like Atlanta is such a big place where people are like, oh, well, you can come, but we, you know, we're not paying nobody, but it'll be good, good exposure. Yeah. And I, bro, I could do more on TikTok, bro. I just stay home. But yeah, <laughs> you with, with, with social sites nowadays, and, and this was a rule of thumb. And, and if you're an artist, up and coming artists, this is something I would say uh, probably is wisdom for you to exercise. If a person does not have the money that you may be looking for, I will trade it for promotion. Meaning if you don't have, if you can't pay me, then I need to be plastered all over the, the uh, media, all over the prom promo. So I got to get something out of it. You ain't gonna give me the money. I need people to know Raz, 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 or because you ain't gonna just hide me and not pay me. You know that's like I don't I don't supposed to be that man. Or it has got to a, be got a, a comment from Chris uh, uh, IBC from Houston, Texas. He say that was one of the reasons I stopped doing shows. No money in it. I had to get a real job. Sad. I had this conversation with somebody else, man. Uh, the body of Christ. Uh, sometimes or oh, they looked at us early on as a draw and i think people would pay you money if they if you could bring in like lecrae you could bring you can fill our church up you know we'll pay you some and back then they would use us like that if we couldn't uh draw or we couldn't add to the offering then they wasn't they wasn't trying to pay money man uh just like you sir i tried to avoid free events but i found myself doing a lot of them and uh, you couldn't avoid it, man. I've had times where, where, where dudes, I, I, man, I'm telling you, God is miraculous. I had a uh, show I did. They wore the crowd out, bro. Uh, put me on last. Everybody sleepy, tired, but they want to see Raz. And then short me my money. And I go back to the hotel. This was in Chicago, actually. And a guy came and like, some dude, he said, Raz, I don't want your phone number. We ain't got to keep in touch. Dude gave me like a, a wad of money, bro. Shook my hand and left. I don't even know who he was to this day, but God using uh, ravens to feed me, bro. That's how I like to describe it, man. So. Man, okay, I got it, bro. We got to, we, I got to say something about that. Go for it. I was struggling recently, bro. Like, okay, I ain't going to go into my whole story, but I do youth development too. That's all I've done the whole time, bro. All these years, there's been two things that, I, well, three things, really. Visual art, uh, being a recording artist, and doing youth development. Now, if you know anything about those three worlds, especially youth development, it is not a get-rich-quick scheme, working with kids. All right. Um, being a visual artist or a recording artist, it's just, it's a gamble. You either going to be balling or mostly not. You know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> yeah, you know, in up. between. It could be up. It could be down. It could be up. It could be down, 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 up, down. You know what I'm saying? So it's people look at the glory. They look at the gr glitz and the gra glamour, and they don't even know half of these artists that's balling have rented out jewelry, famous mainstream artists, and they literally broke, bro. So, but they they put on the illusion of something else. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's part of the job. To the yeah. point where people think if you're a rapper and you ain't got that stuff, I thought you was a rapper. Yeah, I am. I'm a real one. I, I don't have that type of stuff, man. Let me get to another comment here. So I say, I still don't understand how mainstream secular artists with no talents are billionaires, yet Christian hip-hop artists, holy hip-hop artists with triple the talent, not treated the same. The gospel industry is very controlled, man. It's very controlled. It, it's where the spirit of God is, that should be liberty. It's only the appearance of liberty in the gospel music industry that has more control. And why would you say that, Raz? I, I won't rant and complain, but just take a look. Can you name all of the secular artists that are considered famous or big? You can't name them. But I give you, in about 15 minutes, you probably can call out every gospel artist <laughs> you think is famous bro so that tells me it's control it's control you know they it's only room for one lecrae and his crew it's only room for one science we're gonna lift him up for 15 years and then we'll see who's after that but they won't give they won't open the floodgates and let us all just you know bombard the earth like i believe we should and when god is ready 
is going to do. So, well, I, I bro, bro, you opening up a lot of stuff that I have. That's a lot why we here, brother. And this ain't got to be your last time, man. You come back anytime you get ready, son. Absolutely, man. But what I was gonna say, man, is I was going through a lot, man, and uh, I felt. Bro, I was driving Uber because I had a full-time job in youth development, and then it got chopped down to part-time, bro. And I was driving Uber, and guy was like, be obedient. Then I was scrolling on Facebook at the gassing up to go drive Uber. And I knew what it meant. He was like, keep rapping, right? And I was like, all right, okay. And then when I saw that be obedient, bro, I started wanting to cry because he kept telling me like a word. I don't know if you have it where God will just give you a word over and over, like one word. And I kept hearing it in my mind, in my mind, be obedient, 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 obedient. And I was like, but I got to pay bills. They're about to take my car, they, my, my mortgage. Like, I got to get out here and get it. The, the music not paying me. So I got to, I, I don't want to neglect it. I know that's for you, God. And I got, I'm, I'm living for you. But I'm trying to serve the people, but I can't make money on this. So I got to go get it some other type of way. You know what I'm saying? And so, bro, I almost started crying yeah. because I, I was scrolling on Facebook real quick while I was pumping gas. And one of my homeboys, who is also a rapper from Atlanta, he's a dope artist. He had this whole thing, and but obedience was like highlighted. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, Lord, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm still because I know my assignment is not complete. Until he tells me to stop, I gotta push it, and I gotta push it hard for the reason that you're saying. Look. The industry is the whole Illuminati, all of that stuff. That stuff is facts, bro. They might try to shut me down for saying it, but it is facts, bro, because I know people in the secular music industry. I'm in Atlanta, bro. We all know somebody who knows somebody. Like, right. every, bro, Every since I've been here, people are like, bro, you finna be famous now because you're a real artist, and I know this person, I know that person. I'm going to plug you in. They never do, though. But they keep telling me that. Right for years, bro. For like yeah. ten years, bro. Me, like, me, and the producer, uh, my producer, shots out, I am uh, my producer, man. He was talking to me, and I was telling him something, man. Like you saying how the whole Illuminati, or even just the movement against God's kingdom, is really what it is. It's easy for them to find us now, right? All they have to do is see where you streaming it, right? Because it's easy, you know, to hit. It's digital all now. So it's easy to, to hit some numbers or hit a computer and see, man, Brother Wars is uh, streaming really big in, in Texas and in Atlanta. So let's uh, let's beef up the negative uh, music there to kind of counteract him. That's easy to do nowadays. You know, uh, back in the days, it was a little more difficult because you had to wait for sound scan report. And you didn't know what the hood was on unless you went into the hood. But nowadays, man, boom. If I see you making noise in Atlanta, if I'm against God's kingdom and his message, I could just like just send more of my artists that way to, uh, you know, drown out the message. You can never win against God. And I say this, God don't have, God is not at war with anybody. People say, what is the opposite of God? The devil. That's not true. God has no opposite. There is nobody to parallel against God. Everything is under him. So when he gets ready to do something, he going to do it. But these are the stuff that we just see that the enemy tries, man. No weapon formed against us. But this is stuff I see. It's easy for him to try to shut us down now, side, Because all he got to do is see where you streaming at. Hmm. Over here in... in Arizona, we see a lot of brother war stream. Let's let's flood that area with with a, you know with the trash so we can put you know uh distinguish uh you know put put a uh nullify some of his effect or whatever out there. Right. Well, yeah, man. Uh so I, I there was one thing I glazed over and I gotta go back to it because so go for uh, it, brother. So so true, and that is when you were saying twice, you told two stories where people did not take care of you financially like they were supposed to and someone else came through in a clutch now that's what happened to me and i forgot i didn't get to that because i have a little add i get off track i got so no, bro it all making sense to me maybe i'll go back and live tomorrow and be like oh he was a 
It's, it's, no, it's, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm saying stuff all the time, but I'm kind of bouncing around. But what I was going to say, man, uh, is the Holy Spirit literally said, because I was like, Lord, I'm not getting paid for this music and I want to do it. And I've never been in it just to make money, but I got to make money and then I got to squeeze it in. You know what I'm saying? So I got to. So it's like kind of frustrating. And he was like, if you take care of my business, I will take care of yours. I bro, I was stressed. And ever since he said that to me, I'm like, Lord, you just tell me what you want me to do. Then I'm going to just do it. That's why I made that song. Tell me when to go like 40 water. Like, so hey, can I, can I be honest with you, Sad? To this day, I still struggle with that, man. Because I look up and have 70 debt collectors chasing me. And I'm saying, God, I'd rather owe you than them. They going to tank my credit. They going to tank my life. But I know you have mercy. So point is, God will always challenge your faith, man. And I still struggle that with that till today because I'm like, man, God, it's all I got. You want me to do this with it? And he goes seven people behind me saying they finna drag off stuff and all this, man. What you going to do about that? <laughs> but now, nah, man, that is that is mature of you to say, man, that once God told you. I've heard that a million times, man. You know, if you take care of God's business, he'll take care of yours. And it is true, people, you know. It might but not God, God will stretch your faith at the same time. Absolutely. And it might not be what we want or what we think. You know what I'm saying? We might have to make financial sacrifices, but he's going to make sure we got food on the table, a roof over our head, and we good. That we might right. have debt. We might have all of this. But if we don't stress and we just, and I, bro, I was stressing, bro. I was having anxiety, everything. But, but bro, like he's been taking care of me because I, because that obedience, bro, that obedience opens doors for blessings. And, and a lot of false prosperity preachers think, say that it's just tithing and giving financially. No, it's giving your life, giving your time, giving your efforts, being like, look, this brother right here needs someone to call him right now. And I know the Holy Spirit is telling me, but I'd rather watch Netflix. And you like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and call him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Did you, you know, say it don't feel good, though? So we, we, we coming down, man. We're at the last minute. I want you to get it all out. Don't worry about no minute. I want you to say whatever you want to say to the people, man, and I'm going to come back and close this out, man. So God will complete the good work that he started in us. So I'm still on the same mission from Brothers Graham. My sound has changed. My, re my location, my physical location has changed, but my mission remains, man. And I, I feel like a lot of people think, oh, if you pass 40, you, oh, no, we still here, man. And these young people need our influence, man. They need our, hear our voice. They need the wisdom that God has put through us. So I'm calling on y'all to support us, to support uh, Roz and what he's doing. Support me, Brother War, B-R-U-T-H-A-W-A-R. All you got to do is type it in YouTube instagram tiktok support me man it's a movement the movement continues we not too old to keep using our gift our voice is still working there's still power there's still work to be done so a lot of y'all brothers that's over 30 over 40 we still got a job to do it maybe it's not time for you to rap anymore maybe it is but either way whatever it is we still got work to do man we got to stand up and do what we need to do for our young people because they being led astray and they being lied to, man. We got to step it up, man. That that is that is so true. That is so true. It's coming from uh brother war size. I like to call him myself, man. Uh God put me back on his mission size because he said, you know, okay, it doesn't make it doesn't matter if you made it or didn't make it, whatever it is. I don't know what people say. Did you make it? Yeah, you made it. What is it? What is it? What is it? But God told me this. I said, don't matter if they got big, got what they wanted or didn't. It's still gospel rappers looking at us saying, what we do next? Yeah. That is why I back. That's why I birthed New Grape Tree. Uh, that is why I'm going to stay on the stage till I croak. That is why I'm going to continue to stay in the forefront of the movement because we are still being examples to uh up and coming uh christian rap artists man listen y'all find side i want y'all to do me a favor i want y'all to find him on social sites and then send him messages saying man get down with the new grape tree 
Because I need this brother on the new grape tree, man. I need him to spit. I need him to do what God told him to do, was to come to the forefront. He was part of an amazing group. And he was one of the standout members. But I had no idea God was the catalyst for him to be the leadership. So I think he deserves to be on some platforms in front of some people. And I want to do that for him. But I know this man listened to God. So y'all bug him and God and say, hey, man, we need a new album for you, uh, Brother War, on the new Grape Tree, man. Uh, this is my man, Sai. This is Raz. This is the new Grape Tree Podcast. Sai, give him the last words, and we're going to get out of here, brother. Yeah, yeah, my brothers and my sisters that are watching, man, the mission continues. So whatever God has called you to do, it's not over. It's time to continue, and this world needs it now more than ever. So whether you rap or not, man, whatever you're called to do, man, some of, some of you have given up on the mission that God called you to do a long time ago, and that mission and that calling is still on your life. So don't give up. God is our boss. This world will we will not allow this world to boss us around out of fear, out of finances, out of our limited idea of success. You're successful if you're touching people's lives for God and you're doing what God called you to do. Forget about the numbers because each and every person that you reach, that is important to God. He would have died for just one person. So we need to, you know, go the leave the 99 and go get that one that's straight away you know what i'm saying so stay the course my brothers my sisters don't give up the fight the good fight of faith hey man that is brother war uh legendary group brothers Grimm, uh size go to atl check him out hit him up on any of his uh social sites man dope artists dope brother uh co-labor glad to be in co-laboring with him man we're gonna uh sign off right here man continue to support the movement new grape tree uh y'all get at us man support the movement books uh t-shirts whatever man y'all get at us man love you shot i'm uh, uh we're gonna talk bro he put you on here uh as much as you want man you want to come back and share anything you need to brother this is an open platform for you man let's get it all right y'all we out it's new grape tree well next week i don't know who we got man maybe antonius what y'all think maybe LG wise, I have no idea what his dude is, but like I si say, he's somewhere lurking. Uh, Antonius was down here in uh, Metro Atlanta. We used to talk I, I talked to him uh, two days ago. We text each other, okay. man. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, who was it? Uh, DCP hit me, man. Dina I wouldn't Kemp. mind having DCP. DCP ain't still putting it down for the Lord, but I would yeah. love to have him on here, man. So y'all yeah. hit us up, man. We out of here, man. Appreciate y'all enjoying the podcast. Bless.